Gilman again, um, back for another quick edit of a landscape photo. When I pick these particular images for these uh, short tutorials, I purposely pick images which, at a glance, are pretty flat and bland. Um, images which will certainly not be my best photographs, which I've made over the years. But more realistically, like the sort of images that the people learning at this sort of point in their uh, development in landscape photography might be achieving themselves. And trust me, it doesn't matter how good you are or what you've achieved in landscape photography, we still take an awful lot of very ordinary photographs to get to that one or two really good ones each year that we're quite pleased with. So this is a basic shot of a place called Dunster Castle in North Somerset. I was just driving by it one day, pulled over in a lay by near a field opposite the castle. There was some relatively nice light on the side of the castle, which doesn't really show here in the raw image because it's very flat, and I thought it made an interesting image. Like the longest lens I had with me was a zoom lens, which I don't normally use. I normally use primes, but I had an 18 to 55, so I shot this at 55, and you can see that I've got the majority of it in. But one thing that lets it down is that because of the distance away I was and the format I'm using, of course, I've got a lot of negative sky space here and a couple of dust bunnies. So the first thing I'd look at when I was looking at an image like this before I was going to turn it into something would be the crop. Now I think because of the few almost like panoramic uh, structure of the lower half of the photo and also we have this lovely darker cloud line above the top, I think this lends itself to a panoramic shape. So let's just bring that down and allow that top cloud to frame the castle as the bottom frames it also. Also here we have a few animals and livestock in the field which I think is a little distracting. But I also like this point where this foreground run of trees crisscrosses against the back. So I'm going to pull that in a little bit and use that as my end point, but I don't want to be too near the edge there. But I think that is a relatively nice crop. That's quite interesting. So the first thing I'm going to tackle with this is just check the exposure. I'm just going to bring that up a little bit because it's a little bit low, a little bit flat. And as you can see, that instantly helps brighten up the image. And now my eye is drawn to the sky. This could be a really nice dramatic sky. And there's a couple of little cheats within Lightroom you can use to really pull that out. And one of them is the clarity slider. Clarity is often used a little bit holistically across most images, but it makes them too crunchy. And I don't always like using it, or much of it, within foregrounds or areas where there's a lot of uh, pattern and structure or texture. It does too much to the image, but it does work really well in skies. So if we take an adjustment brush and we use clarity, that's another nice soft edge on our brush, with a good feather, we can paint some clarity on you can already see it pulling detail out of the sky, making that sky more dramatic straight away. So I'm only going to apply it to the sky, revealing a couple of dust spots there, but we'll deal with those later. There, and then we can just play with the contrast, okay, and a little bit of dehaze as well, and we can really begin to produce a much more dramatic sky. One thing I'm very aware of when I do bits with the skies is it also causes uh, a bit more noise in the sky or enhances the noise that was already there. So I like whilst I'm on this adjustment area, bear in mind I'm just done this bit which should come up red, there you go. I do like to uh, put some noise reduction in there as well just to settle that down. Now I'm not quite happy with that because at the moment we don't quite have tonal balance between the base and the, and the, and the top of the image because we've got this lighter line above. So let's just now go to a graduated filter, pull that down, reduce the exposure and just darken that off too. Too much, back off. There. So now we've got this nice dark, almost border to our sky across the top there and I really like that. But now this looks too dark compared to the bottom of the image down here and I don't like that imbalance either. So I'm going to apply another graduated filter I'm holding down the arrow button here on a Mac so that the grad comes down nice and straight. Set that up and then draw that down also and you'll notice that now we're not distracted by the bottom of the image. Our eye isn't drawn away from it and that's lovely. Before we did that you can see that it opens up the image entirely and then we can frame it a little bit with some tonality. That's really nice. What I really like most about this image are all these highlights on the edges of these bushes and trees. Now these are the sort of things that are going to make this image pop. 
And we can do that in one of a couple of ways. So some people will jump onto Clarity and push that up, and you'll see straight away it does that. But it does that crunchy thing which I don't like. It looks a little bit like old style HDR, and I'm not happy with that. So I'm going to pop that back. And what I'll do is I'll come down to Luminance. And I know that these are yellows and light greens on these highlighted areas. So let's just play with the luminance and see if we can bring it up a little bit better there. There, how about that? Greens, which in either way, which works best for you. There, that's quite nice. Unfortunately, we brought this up a little bit more now on the base. We can go back to that at any point and just darken that off again to compensate. Too much? Back off. Always go too far and then back off. Okay. So that's looking quite good. If we just compare before and after, on the right, of course, we've got a much more interesting image being produced now, but I'm still not quite happy. I still need that uh, castle area in particular to pop. And one way you can do that is let's go to our white and black sliders, and we're going to hold down Alt while we move our white slider up until we start to see some sort of clipping. Here we go. Now we want to back off away from that get rid of it and then we know that our white point is set at the highest it can be without it clipping and now you can see already that started to pop really nice do the same with the blacks pull them down of course in this case until we start to see the blacks come through as clipping back away again drop them right out and that's about it yeah that looks really nice see how that's beginning to pop now so this is a really basic edit. And what we haven't touched yet is the colour. We need that to push, pull through now. So let's just use a vibrant slider for a nice, easy, quick edit and pull that up. And look how that enhances the image. Beautiful. Now we really do have an image which is interesting and attractive to look at. I love these little gates down the bottom here as well. A little bit of extra detail. I like the hidden turret behind here. It's looking a little bit green. So let's just push tint away from green and back again until we settle in a place where we think it looks really good. I think it looks good about there. A little warmer because it was brighter than this on the edge. There, looking really good. This is a really basic, quick, fast edit. Now before I finish off, I'm just going to get rid of this dust mark and I'll do that in Photoshop because the patch tool in Photoshop is wonderful for doing something like this. Take a few seconds to open. And while we wait, let's have a quick before and after. Oh, looks glitters to it. There we go. Just waiting for that to buffer up. The Mac is a little slow today. It's a very old one. So here we go. Let's just zoom in on that area because we want to get rid of this bunny. I've already got the patch tool set up and all I need to do is ring it, pull it a little bit of something similar next to it and I'll get rid of it. Very quick check. Make sure there are no others we've missed. Turn one on the right and at 100% here also. No, that's okay. Okay, that's fine. Now I'm not even, because I'm doing a quick edit like I did in my last video, I'm going to bother doing a different layer for this. This is a nice quick edit. So. Just save that, so it saves back into Lightroom with that adjustment made. Done. Close it all down. Find Photoshop and get back to our image. So now we've got this rid of this dust bunny. I think this looks really nice. I don't think we need to do any more to it than that other than sharpen it. Now what I'll do at this particular stage to sharpen is I like to use a sharp plugin by Nick Software as opposed to using the sharpening down here. This is a Fujifilm image and the sharpening isn't always particularly good with Lightroom. It can be a little bit wormy, I think some people describe it, and it can be a bit muddy. So what we're going to do is we're going to open the photo in Nick Software Output Sharpener, Sharpener Pro 3 it's called. Here it comes. And this has already got a preset set up, you can see straight away that's really quite sharp. But it's probably too sharp at this point. Yeah, we can sort of see a little bit too much. Maybe some artifacts and noise being drawn in. So I'm just going to back it off a little bit. I'm used to using this. So you'll need to figure it out yourself when you use it. But I know roughly where my control could be. I like to back off a little bit on the structure to increase the focus. So I get a sharpness, but without that sort of 
gritty, over crunchy sort of image. I'm going to save that. The image was pretty sharp as it was. And there we have it. I'm not really going to go much further than that because again, my first set of series, my ser first series, sorry, tripping off my time, is going to be about fast edits and why you don't need to spend hours and hours and hours necessarily on an image to make it look attractive. So let's just pop that up full screen. What about that? I think that's a far more interesting image. It's pleasant to look at. It's got structure. It's got some drama within the skies there. It's got lovely distribution of highlights and specular lights across the fronts of the trees there to give it some actual uh, dimension and, and it even tells us a story, this lonely castle on a forested hill. It could be anywhere in the world, couldn't it? So let's just go back to our bar and I'll go back to what it looked like to start with. If the computer wants to play ball, there you go. Boy, here we go. So that's probably pretty much what we looked like to start with. Let me come on from that. To that, a final image. And you saw the various steps there as they were saved throughout the process. So there you go. Again, thanks for watching. That's Dunster Castle. A basic, simple landscape photograph edited in QuickTime. Thanks again.